Today's surah, uh, after Surah Yusuf, comes Surah Al-Ra'ad. Surah Al-Ra'ad is a Makki surah, and it's interesting that this entire surah is a battle between haq and batil. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about His creation and His power and how His power and His creation trumps and it overcomes the batil. And the batil was that the Quraysh, what they believed in was the batil. The idols that they worshipped was the batil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that many ulama they say about the surah that in this surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gives the example of clouds. When we talk about ra'ad, when we talk about a thunderstorm or lightning or thunder, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he brings the examples of clouds. Because clouds interestingly they can either Either bring some benefit to mankind or they can produce something that is lightning that can damage property of people and it can be harmful to mankind so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through one creation of his he can bring good from it and he can bring uh, he can bring things that can be harmful to other to people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah from beginning to end there is one central message and that is that the Quran is the ultimate source of guidance for each one of us not only that not only is it the Quran but there are other things such as the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ultimate thing that will bring peace in our life. We all are looking for peace in life. We all are trying to find happiness in life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, if you want that peace, you want that happiness, you have to come to the Quran. You have to come to the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if anyone thought for a moment that this is all our deen is, just the Quran and to believe in the Quran, to read the Quran, to study the Quran and the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you want Jannah, then there's a whole lot more to that. Allah talks about fulfilling oaths. Allah talks about fulfilling promises. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about helping others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about bringing people together. Two people who are in a conflict. They don't want to talk to each other. To step in and reconcile the hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this is also part of Iman. And after this passage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that all these people who do these kind of things and they pray their salat and they give their zakat and they spend on charity from which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, uh, given them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that these are the people who are, going to, who are going to inherit Jannah in the hereafter. So in this surah, there is just, there is few ayat that I want to share with you that are really worthy of our attention. Of course, the entire surah is worthy of our attention, but there are a few verses I want to bring to your attention today in this brief reminder. First of all, there is an example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gives in this surah. And the example begins with the words, Anzala minasamai ma'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sends down rain. Now pause here for a moment. Any time in the Quran, or most of the time, when Allah talks about sending down rain, and especially if there's a discussion of the Quran taking place, then it is not rain that Allah is talking about. Allah is talking about the Quran. Because think about it for a moment. Just like Allah says in the Quran, water is a source of life. وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْءٍ Likewise, the Quran is a source of life. A dead heart, a heart that is dead, devoid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes in contact with the Quran, the heart is illuminated. That's number one. Number two is, just like water comes from above and it goes into the ground and it might be a dead earth, then not only that, the rain goes in and it changes the landscape altogether. Not only does it benefit the earth, but then it begins to grow vegetation that, that benefits others. Likewise, a heart that is dead, not only does the Quran come and impact that heart, but then that person begins to impact other people they begin to have a positive impact on other people. And so this is exactly what the role of the Quran is. And this is why you go back to the lives of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, who they were before Islam and who they were after Islam. And there is no book 
that has brought about a transformation in the history of mankind, the way the Quran was able to transform the, these people who were known as the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum. There is no book that has that kind of an impact. And this is why we also find in the Quran that if a person who, who empties their heart, you know there are people who read the Quran, and their hearts are filled with diseases and sickness. And all they will do is they will try to go into the Quran and find ambiguity in the Quran and find faults in the Quran because they are approaching the Quran in the wrong way. But wallahi, any person who comes to the Quran with an empty heart, an empty vessel, they have put aside all their grudges against Islam and whatever it is, and they come to the Quran with a clear conscience. There is no way they do not walk away from the Quran that they, and they are not impacted. They are most certainly impacted. Why? Because the message of the Quran is extremely clear. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Anzala mina sama ima'an. And then Allah, Allah says, Fasalat awdiyatum bi qadariha. The valleys became filled with water to a certain degree that it does not destroy the properties, but in a way that water is flowing. Now, when you talk about a valley, sometimes the valley is deep but sometimes the valley it might be shallow so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that water has come down from the sky and it went into the valleys based on their certain degree now this surah was revealed where well, I just mentioned earlier where was it revealed in Mecca when Allah talks about valleys which valley existed at that time the valley of Mecca right Think about it for a moment. It was the valley of Mecca. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, the Quran came upon these people, the Quraysh, and it went into the land. And just like water, when it comes into a valley, it enters into every small gap of that town and every single small gap of that city. Likewise, the Quran came down and it penetrated throughout the entire city of Mecca. And it, and it took based on uh, the people of Mecca, they took the Qur'an on different degrees, okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that there are some hearts, okay? When Allah talks about accepting or absorbing water to a certain degree, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that there are some people in Mecca, they, they absorb the Qur'an and the Qur'an changed their life. And there are some people that they did absorb the Qur'an and it did not change their life. Such as we find the story of Abu Jahl, such as we find the story of Umayyah bin Khalaf, and there are so many others that they would go behind the walls of the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they would listen to the Quran being recited, and they were impacted by the Quran, but yet the Quran did not penetrate into their heart. And then Allah subhanahu wa taala He talks about the foam. See, when we talk about water. Water, when you see, imagine standing on a beach. The water is coming to your feet. What you see is a lot of foam on the water. But as soon as that water comes and it touches your feet, you pay a close attention to it, that foam is basically nothing. That foam has disappeared. Likewise, when we talk about even fire, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that when, when, we talk, when he talks about sending down rain and he talks about foam, he also talks about, Allah Jalla wa'ala talks about foam in the context of fire. Because when you burn metal, for example, or you burn gold, what is the purpose of it? You burn gold, you burn the metal, you might want to make a fork out of it, you might want to make a spoon out of that metal, but the very first process is, you have to remove all the dirt from that metal. You have to remove all the dirt from that gold. All the filth that's in there, you have to remove it. And usually when this process takes place, there is a foam that is developed on top of that gold. There is a foam that is developed on top of that, that metal. And what they usually do is, that is when they remove all that dirt. So when we talk about water, there is foam. When we talk about fire, there is a type of, a type of foam that does exist. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that when we talk about the Qur'an, every heart is going to absorb the Qur'an in a different capacity. Each one of us sitting over here, we are connected to the Qur'an on a different capacity. What my capacity might be is, 
may not be your capacity. What your capacity is may not be someone else's capacity. But at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, the foam represents the batil. The foam represents the falsehood. And the water between, the water underneath, or the, or the gold underneath, or the precious metal underneath represents the haqq. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that when you look at the foam and you might think that this, because when you look at the gold, when you look at the water, the first thing you see is a foam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that just like the foam disappears, likewise the batil and the falsehood will also disappear. Just like the water remains and that is the haq, the haq will always remain. In every single situation in this world, every single story that you see in this world and human civilization, the batil will eventually disappear and the haq will always remain. In our matter, in our context, it always means that the batil that does exist outside it will always disappear. The battle will always show its falsehood. It will always show that it is not genuine. And the only thing that's genuine, it's what's beneath it, which is the Quran. In this case, the water that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the example of. So we should always remember that we should always be on the side of haq. Though on top we might see the foam and the falsehood, but that foam and that falsehood will eventually disappear. And the only thing that's going to remain is the water or the gold underneath. Another beautiful thing that is mentioned in this surah is Allah is telling these people of Makkah, what more do you want from me? I sent a prophet within your amongst your people. I gave you the Quran. You know the, the power of the Quran. Allah then says, Inna Allah la ma bi hatta ma bi anfusihim. If you truly want to change, this is Allah telling the people of Makkah, if you truly want to change, the change has to come from within. And this is one thing that I will say, that this is, subhanAllah, a maxim of life that we can always take. You will talk about people who are life coaches. When they talk, about, when they talk to people to motivate them, the first thing they will tell them is that you have to change from within first. This is the rule of life. Even subhanAllah, when we talk to our children, we should teach our children the same thing. I as a father, I as a mother, I can sit here and give you advice after advice after advice. But the very first person who has to change is who? Is you. You have to change first. You have to have the understanding of something. You need to take something important. I can sit there and talk to my child about the importance of education and how education is important and why they need to get good grades in school and so forth. But there's only so much advice you can give them at the end of the day. If they don't change, nothing is going to change. So this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the people of Makkah. I gave, I sent the Prophet within you. I have given you examples after examples. So many surahs have been revealed to help you understand one simple concept. And that is to believe in this man as your Prophet. And to believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you cannot even do all that, then the blame cannot be put on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The blame is on you. The blame is on you. Why? Because change starts with you first. The change starts within you first. And if you're not willing to change, then nothing is going to change. And what's beautiful is a scholar, he mentioned this very beautifully. He says that when we talk about, when Allah says to the Ra'd, Ra'd it means thunder and so forth and lightning. When we talk about a thunderstorm coming into existence, you don't see a thunderstorm coming into existence just like that in five minutes. It takes a little time. The clouds come together. Then, you, you know, there's, there's a whole process in order for a thunderstorm to develop. When we talk about a tornado, does a tornado just come into existence just like that? No. It takes a lot of elements for a tornado to come into existence. And so many clouds moving together. So just like there are steps in order for a storm to take place, there are steps that, take, that have to take place in order to bring a change in our life. And just like it takes time for a thunderstorm to come into, into development or come into existence, likewise, when it comes to change within our life, it will take a little time. Change does not come overnight. We have to remember this. Change does not come overnight. Step after step, inshallah, then this will bring anything in life we want to do. It takes time, it takes patience, but then eventually it will come in our life. And the last lesson to be learned from this surah, which is a very beautiful lesson, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about those people whose hearts are connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me give you an example. 
we lose a family member in our life, often we will say, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do this to us? We might lose a job. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do this to us? We have invested money into some project. The project failed completely and it crashed. And what happens is, you lose all the money. Allah times the person says, why did this happen to me? But a person, Allah says in the Quran, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبُ The only way to bring satisfaction and peace in our life is when this heart is in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same person who lost a family member, if their hearts are connected and they remember Allah, see dhikr here does not only mean subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, that's not all it means. It means that when a calamity strikes or anything happens in our life, if the heart remembers Allah, like in the case of losing a family member, yes, there's going to be pain. There's going to be some emotions involved. But if a person says that this is through the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the heart remembers Allah in that situation and says, I am okay with this because this is the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this heart will be in a place of peace. A person who loses their job, yes, there's going to be worry. Yes, there's going to be a little difficulty, a little anxiety and so forth. But you turn around and you say that this is from the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the heart remembers Allah in that situation, then a person knows that, you know what, inshallah, just like Allah took away one thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless me with another thing. So at that time, a person again will find peace in their heart. A person who loses money in a project, they lose money in an investment, whether it's anything that you invest money into. But if you lose money, at that time you say, you know what, the heart is connected to Allah. The heart is remembering Allah and a person says, just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me before, yes, Allah took it from me this time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is powerful enough and he has the ability to give me even more next time. And that is when, when a person has this positive thought about Allah and they don't complain and say derogatory things and negative things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah turns around their situation. Not only will they find peace in their life, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace it with something better. So we find in this surah, once again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about his power, the things that he has the, cap the capacity of doing. And last thing I would say is this. When we talk about haq and batil, truth and falsehood, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not always necessarily engage that what are they saying and there's a response. You know, when we talk about debates between haq and batil, you often find one person will say something, the other person will say something. This is not the style of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The style of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Allah mentions everything that he has the power of. And when he mentions all these kind of things, this is sort of a challenge to the people of the Quraysh. That I can do all this, what can you or your deities, what can they do? And of course, when the deities cannot do anything, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showing that the haq will always prevail over the batil. And we find this in many lessons in the surah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to number one, keep us connected with the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the Quran a means of inspiration in our life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the Quran impactful in our life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us ability to make the change within ourselves and come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thirdly, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always, in all circumstances, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep our hearts and connected with Allah through the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amin Rabbil Alameen. Wa jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inna al-Muslimina wal-Muslimati wal-Mu'minina wal-Mu'minati wal-Qanitina wal-Qanitati wal-Sadiqina wal-Sadiqati wal-Sabirina wal-Sabirati wal-Khashi'ina wal-Khashi'at والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات 
أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما